Namaste and welcome to day 24th of 30 days of AppWrite. In the last episode, we introduced you to the cloud functions. In this episode, we'll create a cloud function that will send us notification to our Discord server whenever new user signs up in our application. So let us begin. I'll be writing cloud functions using Dart as this is Flutter and Dart tutorial. You can follow the official blog post of 30 days of AppWrite to write cloud functions in Node.js. If you prefer, you could write cloud functions in any or the supported language we introduced in the last episode. If you want to write Dart and if it is not already available in your functions, you can activate it using the environment variable we introduced in the last episode, app functions runtime environment variable. Just add new value separated by comma dot hyphen 2.12. We'll be using dot 2.12 and restart the server using docker compose up dash d from the folder where your app write is installed and contains docker compose dot ml file. Let us create a new dot project dot create discord notification. So I'm creating this new project. Let me open it in VS code. I have opened the recently created project in my VS code. Now I'll change this. So this file discord notification is inside bin. I'll get it out, remove this bin, and then I'll rename this to main dot dot and we'll add one dependency that is HTTP in order to make HTTP request to send notifications to discord using Discord's webhook. In the main dot dart, let us import dart io and http. So in order to import http, I need to perform dart pop get http. Let's import it as http. Let us write our function. I'll make this asynchronous. Let's just print function execution is started. Then I'm importing dart io to get environment variables. So let us get a list of environment variables. Platform dot environment will give us the list of environment variables. Now URL equals PNV. We'll pass this custom environment variable in our via our function setting. We'll look at that in a bit. So if you remember from the last episode, any data or payload for a function executed via app rights event triggers, we get this environment variable. We get the data in this environment variable inside our function. So this will be our data. Finally, we'll create a HTTP request. Post request URL will be our URL. This could be null, so we'll just make it empty. If it's null, we'll just make it empty. And then headers. So Discord webhook requires header to be content type JSON. Application JSON. And finally, body. We need to send a JSON encoded data in the body and Discord webhook requires a content attribute in the body. So content should be new user just sign up and we'll pass the data of the new user. So dollar data to string. This will be our content and finally we can print notification sent successfully. 
we now have our function ready let us first create a discord webhook so let me open up discord here i have my own channel for react bits so for react bits i want to receive the webhook in the general channel so i'll just go to edit channel and then inside integrations i will create a new webhook and i'll call this water intake boat channel general and finally we just need to copy the webhook url i can copy this save changes you can also modify the avatar but it's fine for now and let's get back to our upright console i'm inside my upright console i have selected my water in tracker project here i'll add a new function and that should be available here if not you need to update your environment variable and restart if you have done that it might be just catch just reload so that that will be available and let's name this discord notification and create once we create we need to go to settings and we need to add the environment variable for webhook url webhook url and paste the url that we copied from discord name is fine and we need to trigger this event on account.create and i would also like to add users.create so that we can test easily by creating a user from the dashboard itself okay so we have a function now we need to deploy the tag there are two ways one is using cli you can just copy this command and run it in your functions project by if you have already initialized your cli properly for this project otherwise you could manually create a tar.gz file see this tar.gz file and deploy so let me create a tar.gz file for my function let me go back here and from the terminal i'll just create tar.gz file so tar jcvf just remember this command dot dot slash so i want to save this file up one level and then i want to zip the contents of this current folder if i tap enter all this is created however the upright functions doesn't know about pub it doesn't know how to run pub get it doesn't know anything it just tries to execute the function so in order to make it work we need to include the pub dependencies within here and also for node.js if you are writing in node.js you need to include the node modules folder as well so in order to include the pub dependencies in this folder itself we could use export pub catch in dot upright so it should be dot upright and then dot pub get we can run dot pub get so that all the dependencies are kept inside this dot upright folder and we could create now another tar file that will include this dependencies now we can go back to our server and deploy this tar file if i go to my desktop i have this tar file open and for me the command is dot main dot dot and now i can hit create this will upload our deployment and we can activate so this is activated let us also open discard so that we can see it in action if i execute this via here or via http api if i execute this let's see it's waiting see i get a message but the payload is null because i executed this via http request however if we do create a new user here let's go here and create a new user add user add a new user create 
this should execute the function and we should receive proper message so new user just signed up we get the details of the new user that signed up in our application this is a very simple example of cloud functions you can achieve anything you can run any arbitrary code that can perform any action that you want using the cloud functions and as we discussed in the previous episode we could execute cloud functions via api request like we did here this execute now button is just making an api request to execute this function next from system trigger so we selected the trigger like account.create and users.create so whenever these events occurred the function was executed and we were able to receive the notification and the third way will be to add a scheduled execution for function so if we add a proper schedule with cron syntax here this function will execute repeatedly using that schedule so scheduling a function and how to execute function how to leverage this schedule we will see it in the next episode of AppRite functions thank you everyone for watching this tutorial hope it was useful see you again in the next episode